This is an overview of how I used photogrammetry as part of my design and technology coursework. I'm designing a highly modular and customizable target rifle intended for Olympic, Commonwealth and other high level shooters. I'll be using photogrammetry to essentially scan in a plasticine mold of a grip that was custom made for my client. Now 3D scanning can be used to achieve a similar result. However, 3D scanners are expensive, whilst cheap ones don't work particularly well. Photogrammetry on your hand can work with DSLRs or even your phone camera and use open source software such as Meshroom to calculate and create 3D models out of your photos. Meshroom prefers textured and bright objects and doesn't like shiny as well as dark objects where details can't be seen easily. The process involves taking photos from multiple angles and elevations around the object. Additionally, you can use high zoom or high detail photos of the surface of the object to add additional texture and detail to the model. However, in my case, I only want the wavefront object file and don't require any kind of textures. This process usually takes around 10 to 20 minutes, depending on how many photos you do, and the object cannot be moved during this time. If your object does move, I recommend restarting. Once you've collected all your photos, which could be anywhere from 50 to 200 photos, you can import them into the Meshroom software. You might be wondering why I am using my camera to record my screen rather than a screen recorder. The reason for this is that whilst the project is rendering, this is a very hardware intensive program. Your CPU, GPU and memory are all tested. I recommend 16 gigs of RAM at least with an NVIDIA CUDA GPU and a powerful processor. Workstation grade pro uh, computers will be the best choice. The first process that, is, that takes place is the finding of the virtual camera positions. So this is a CPU intensive process and once it's complete it will show you where the computer thinks you took the different photos from. You can always check to see if you have enough photos during this point. And some photos might be discounted if it can't calculate the right position. The more photos you have, the longer this process will take. The longest process is depth mapping. Once this is complete, as well as texturing and other processes, you will be treated with this. You can load model, and you'll be presented with a 3D texture model of your item, as well as the environment surrounding it. Obviously, in my application, I don't need all the background uh, environment. The only thing I'm interested in is the actual object. The object itself is quite detailed. Uh, parts towards the bottom tend to get distorted, but things at the top, where most of the cameras were, came out quite well. Now this is the grip I made to test it. It's not particularly functional, but the main thing here is trying to see if the different details and grooves get transferred into the object file. The different colors have been added in order to try and maximize the computer's ability to lock onto different positions on the object and try and corroborate whether it's in camera locations were. The tripod is recommended for this process, however, it's not necessary. You can achieve very good results with both DSLRs and camera phones, even without tripods. I mostly used it just to try and uh, create more focused photos with less blur. It's also just easier using a tripod to move around. Once this was complete, I did the same process as before and got a very good result. You can already see how the different details of the model have transferred into the 3D object. The mesh is also very detailed. This mesh contains over 1.5 million different vertices. It's quite a big file and we will have to slightly decrease the texture quality in order to work with it. The surface texture is also very impressive. 
with details coming out very well. Even my fingerprint can be seen. Now I imported this file into Blender and obviously everything came along with it, not just the grip. You can see parts of my room, the chair I'm sitting on right now, have different details which I don't really need. So I used the decimator tool to halve the vertices count and then went through part by part deleting the vertices. Because of the high number of vertices uh, and the limitations on my computer, it can only select a uh, not all of them from the same location at the time, so I had to re-sweep the same cards multiple times. If you've got a way of speeding this up, please comment below, because I'll be interested. Eventually I just left with a grip, which I imported into Ultimate Akira. Obviously any slicer will work. Interestingly, the program immediately recognized the, uh, the hollow nature of the object and filled in with info, which is good, because that means you don't need extra editing uh, to uh, fill in the inside of it. Overall, the print came out very well. I was very impressed with how much of the detail came across, and it felt almost exactly the same in terms of its uh, shape. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.